Member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. I move third reading of Bill 131, an act to proclaim the month of July as Tibetan Heritage Month. Ms. Karpoche has moved third reading of Bill 131, an act to proclaim the month of July as Tibetan Heritage Month. I return to the member. Thank you, Speaker. Tashi Delek to you and to all members of this House. Tashi Delek is a Tibetan greeting used to convey well wishes to others. I rise today on behalf of my constituents of Park Delhi Park and on behalf of Tibetans across Ontario to speak to this bill, Bill 131, Tibetan Heritage Month. I want to begin with a land acknowledgement. The land we are on is the traditional territories governed by the Dish with One Spoon Wapum Bell Covenant, and it includes the following nations. The Chippewa, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. It is important that I, as a settler, acknowledge the original caretakers of this land. More specifically, as a Tibetan, as someone whose parents and grandparents escaped the illegal Chinese occupation of Tibet, our homeland, someone who has worked to educate others of the true history of my people. It is my responsibility to learn about the history of the indigenous peoples of this land, a place I now call home, and do my part in working towards reconciliation and addressing the past and continued colonization of indigenous peoples. And I commit myself to continuing to unlearn and decolonize spaces I work, I occupy, and to work in solidarity with indigenous peoples in their struggle. Speaker, I am proud to have sponsored this bill in this house. It is especially meaningful to me and to the Tibetan community. This bill proclaims July of each year as Tibetan Heritage Month. July is a significant month for Tibetans, as on July 6th, Tibetans in Ontario and across the world celebrate the birthday of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet, Tenzin Gyatso, who is an honorary Canadian citizen. I want to share with members of this assembly and to everyone watching at home why recognizing Tibetan Heritage Month is important. But first, I have to tell you a bit about the Tibetan people in Ontario and Canada. Ontario is home to over 6,000 Tibetans. My riding of Parkdale High Park has the highest concentration of Tibetans outside of India and Nepal. Because of this, Parkdale is unofficially known as Little Tibet. The invasion of Tibet by China between 1949 and 59 led to thousands of Tibetans escaping Tibet. The first Tibetans arrived in Ontario in the 1970s. It was a small group who settled in the Belleville and Lindsay areas. And for a long time, the community of Tibetans was only about 300 people in the entire province. I read somewhere that it was the smallest immigrant community in Ontario, but it was the birth of the Tibetan community here, leading to the growth of the Tibetan identity and culture in Canada. The big wave of Tibetans resettling in Ontario happened in the early 2000s, and like many immigrant, refugee, and newcomer communities before us, Tibetans landed in Parkdale. Jameson Avenue, in Parkdale was known as the Landing Strip because so many newcomers first landed there before getting settled and then slowly moving across the GTA and Ontario. The Tibetan community, however, stayed in Parkdale and planted roots there. The community made Parkdale its home for the last 20 years. If you walk the streets of the neighborhood speaker, you will see Tibetans in their traditional wear, monks in red robes, prayer flags on the balconies of apartments in high-rise buildings fluttering in the wind, the Tibetan flag, a picture of His Holiness the Dalai Lama gracing homes and businesses. Queen Street West is filled with Tibetan small businesses. 
The Tibetan restaurants have made our favorite food, momos, everyone's favorite food. Momos, for those of you yet to enjoy them, are Tibetan-style dumplings. You may recall we had different kinds of dumplings at the annual Tibet Day reception right here at Queen's Park last year. In the summer, Tibetans are out in the space in front of Parkdale Collegiate on Jameson Avenue every Wednesday to mark Hakar by participating in Goshe. Hakar means White Wednesday, a day to engage in activities where we assert our Tibetan identity. Goshe is a traditional Tibetan performance, a quick step dance done in a circle to encourage a communal feeling and bond. Then, just down the street, we have several monasteries. These are not just places of worship, but also community hubs with programs for seniors, Tibetan language school for children. Speaker, I love attending graduation day, where we spend the day celebrating the achievements of community, our community's children. Whether it's improving their language or learning traditional music and performances. There are also classes on Buddhism, programs like meditation, philosophy, debates, and so much more. All of this, Speaker, may seem like little things, but so much of our heritage is living it. And Speaker, Tibetans do not take it for granted. Because these little things, like having a picture of the Dalai Lama or the Tibetan flag, can lead to imprisonment in Tibet. In Tibet, Tibetan school children are not taught their mother tongue, but instead are forced to learn Mandarin. Considering Tibetans are a fairly small and newer immigrant group, it is a great achievement that we have a Tibetan community center. The Tibetan Canadian Cultural Center, its Tibetan name is Ganjung Chundeling, and it was inaugurated by His Holiness the Dalai Lama when he last visited Toronto. The Tibetan Canadian Cultural Center's mission is to pr preserve, foster, and share the rich and distinct Tibetan culture in Canada. So many wonderful programs and celebrations happen in that space. There are numerous other community organizations across Ontario, and I want to take a moment to recognize them. Tibetan Women's Association of Ontario, Students for a Free Tibet Canada, Canada Tibet Committee, Chushi Ganduk, Regional Tibetan Youth Congress, Ottawa Tibetan Community Association, Belleville Tibetan Community Association, Pemako Welfare Association, Ngari Foundation, Kongo Kidu, Ex Masuri Kidu, Tibetan Children's Village Alumni Association, Tibetan Children's Project Canada, Dome Kidu, and Tehor Kidu. All of them play an important role in the community, and I want to thank them for their efforts. Speaker, Having a Tibetan Heritage Month matters. Heritage is about people. It's the way we identify ourselves. Tibetans, we are a distinct people. We have our own language, script, history, and customs. The Tibetan community in Ontario and the diaspora are now into their fourth generation in exile. I am third generation Tibetan in exile, and I'm the first generation immigrant in Canada. Three generations of statelessness, of not being able to be in the land of your ancestors. Three generations of precarity, instability, and not feeling like you belong anywhere. For Tibetans in Ontario and Canada, we finally have a place to call home, a place where we belong, a place where we can live our lives freely. And because we have that privilege, we also have the responsibility to protect and preserve our culture and identity as a people. For generations, for my entire life, for us as a people, and the way His Holiness the Dalai Lama put it when he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989, was that there has been a calculated and systematic strategy aimed at the destruction of our national and cultural identities by the Chinese government. As a people, we have remained steadfast for more than 60 years, despite China's repressive social, cultural, racial, and economic policies. Recognizing Tibetan Heritage Month is recognizing the human dignity in each of us. 
The person who was the towering figure of my childhood, the matriarch of my family, my maternal grandmother, who passed away last year at age 94. And with her and her generation, a part of our people's story, which unlike many others, is not reflected in history books and is gone forever. She, like many Tibetans, escaped Tibet after the Chinese army invasion and made the difficult decision to take the dangerous journey across the Himalayas by foot with four young children in tow, leaving everything she knew behind, including her husband, my grandfather, who was imprisoned for over 20 years, going into the unknown for the safety and freedom of her children. For six decades, she hoped she could return, but she died without ever having seen her home again. It remained a wish unfulfilled. Her entire life, she worked hard to preserve our heritage and to pass the culture and values to us. Speaker Heritage is also about telling stories. Recognizing Heritage Month is about seeing and celebrating each other's stories. And it is a reminder of our strength as Canadians. It is a way to build community and move towards a path of inclusivity. It's about reasserting the values and principles Ontario and Canada stands for. Telling our stories also helps us understand and take pride in where we come from and where we want to go. Because it's not just the past, but also our shared desire for a future we can determine for ourselves. For Tibetans, we are up against a very well-oiled propaganda machine of the Chinese government who want to tell our stories. So Heritage Month serves as a reminder of accurate tellings of stories. Finally, recognizing Tibetan Heritage Month is also about recognizing the contributions of the Tibetan people, not just to Ontario, but to the world. And I think that the biggest contribution has been our message of nonviolence and compassion because we practice it. Our entire struggle as a people is built on it. Speaker, I want to thank all members of this assembly for supporting this bill. While we may disagree on many issues, this is one we can agree on. I want to thank the government house leader. I am grateful to have had this opportunity to share a part of my identity and my story in this house. With the passage of this bill, Ontario becomes the first jurisdiction in the world to recognize Tibetan Heritage Month. We should pride ourselves in being a leader on this. It's historic. It's also wonderful timing in that this bill becomes law in the year the Tibetan community marks His Holiness the Dalai Lama's 85th birthday. In honor of his 85th birthday, the Tibetan Central Tibetan Administration in Exile, declared the year 2020 as the year of gratitude to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, to not only show our respect, but also to recognize and appreciate all of his achievements. Tibetans in Ontario say thank you to His Holiness by sharing his message of love and compassion through various acts of service and giving back to the community. During the pandemic, the Tibetan community has been so organized delivering fresh meals to frontline health care workers, to the homeless in encampments, sewing cloth masks, hats, aprons, gowns for frontline workers in long-term care homes, in hospitals, in assisted living centers, among others. Joining the collective effort across this province to take care of each other during times of crisis. The Dalai Lama has dedicated his entire life to preserving and promoting Tibetan culture and heritage. It is fitting that as the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, we join in and mark the year of gratitude to the Dalai Lama by officially proclaiming July of each year as Tibetan Heritage Month in Ontario, so that his work and legacy 
of peace and compassion endures. Speaker, I want to conclude by expressing my heartfelt thanks to the people of Parkdale High Park. The Tibetan community is thriving because of the love and solidarity from our neighbors and our larger community. Parkdale High Park is the place that welcomed me and my family with open arms. I will never forget the kindness and warmth that was shown. On behalf of the Tibetan people around the world, including those in Tibet, I want to say to the people of Ontario, thank you. Mm.